forget to give yourself a couple of days notice before you tie your shoes Whoosh, what a rush and then no, you know, you, but you do. You like the things that are bad. Everybody, everybody does. And you, 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 people go a bit mad, I think, in a city especially, you know, because it gets very stressful. People fly the traffic and people flying around. You know, people go strange. They, do, they go for all sorts of weird things that are very bad for them. You know, the gym and yoga and all those <laughs> highly carcinogenic activities that will catch up with you in the end. Or even those really moronic little books, you know, you get now how to release the inner you or... Find the 95 habits of totally effective tosspots you don't want to talk to in the first place. So. <laughs> or release your potential. That's another one. Now, that's a very, very dangerous idea. You should stay away from your potential. I mean, that is something you should leave absolutely alone. Don't... Di you'll mess it up. It's potential. Leave it. <laughs> and anyway, it's like your bank balance. You know, you always have a lot less than you think. You don't look at it. You don't know. Leave it as a kind of the locked door within yourself. And, and that's how it should be. Because then at least in your mind, the interior will always be palatial, you know? <laughs> Wonderful gleaming marble floors, brocaded drapes, mullioned windows covered in mullions, whatever they are. And <laughs> flamingos serving drinks. <laughs> Pianos shooting out canapes into the mouths of elegant men and women who are exchanging witticisms. Yes, this reminds me of the time I was in Budapest with Binky. <laughs> we were trying to steal a goose from the casino. Pum, <laughs> Volvo! <laughs> Don't open the door. Because it won't be like that. All you're going to see will be one tiny, grey, starveling little cat with diarrhoea. <laughs> Sitting on a mattressless, iron-sprung bed with its huge eyes mewing at you. <laughs> Smoking as well, probably. As, as an emphysemic landlady untangles her pop socks in the background. And some terrible guy, the colour of an aubergine, rounds the corner holding a mug of beef tea, wearing a string vest and says, Man, <laughs> That's your potential. But look at the people who use it, who do actually give it everything, you know? Like, great athletes, you know, the Beckhams or Roy Keens of this world. People charging, running up and down the field, swearing and shouting at each other. Are they happy? No! They're destroying themselves. Who's happy? You, the fat fucks watching them. <laughs> With a beer can. Balanced on your ninth belly. Roaring advice of the best athletes in the world. <laughs> you wanker! <clears throat> it's not going to make you happy. It'll depress you when you find out how little you've got, you know? You don't want to find out that the most you could possibly achieve, if you gave it your all, if you harvested every screed of energy within you, and devoted yourself to improving yourself, that all you would get to would be maybe eating less cheesy snacks. <laughs> Nobody needs to know this. And all those people who do try and improve themselves, you know, they're very unimaginative. The people who go to the gym in pursuit of their ideal body and so on, lifting all the machines and the pulling and dangerous things and shouldn't be in there. Nobody should be in there. They, they're in pursuit of their ideal body, but all they come out with is something that's a bit harder and firmer and more tucked, you know. That's boring. I mean, the word here, the key word, is ideal. You could have anything. My, my ideal body, you know, would be just probably something like um, one eye. You probably only need one. <laughs> a kind of sucker thing instead of teeth, because they just give you grief in the end, you know. <laughs> And a long, long tube with my arse way over there so I don't have to deal with it. That would be ideal. <laughs>